Hello there everyone, this is D22 with you today from D22 Responses and today we're going to be doing an updated tutorial on how to make a YouTube thumbnail. Now we're going to open up Photoshop CS6 here so that we can get started. Now I know a lot of you may not have Photoshop CS6 or any kind of photo software but there's some links in the description that will allow you to download some free photo manipulation tools and there's also one that you can do online like an online photo editor, uh, Pixlr I believe it's called and the links will all be in the description description if you don't have any photo editing software and these are just some things that you can do in order to make your thumbnail stand out from all the rest so you're gonna open up your GIMP shop your Photoshop your paint.net whatever software that you have and you're gonna start a new project so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go file new and then you have to set the thumbnail size 1280 by 720 as you can see here the pixels have to stand out and they have to be correct so width is 1280 height is 720 resolution 72 pixels per inch so this makes it uh, a high quality image like at least two megabytes so it'll just allow you to uh, post it in clear quality so we're gonna click OK here and we're gonna open up a blank page here so your thumbnail has to stand out because everybody that is in the partner program can get custom thumbnails now so it really doesn't add to the variety of people so basically everyone can get it but if you want to know how to make really good thumbnails and make it stand out from the rest this video will show you how so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this white background pretty much less bland so if your tool has it or if your photo software has it you will use a gradient tool and then you can pick any kind of gradient you want. So let's say you're looking for something edgy. So we're going to do like a silver and white gradient. That's what it'll look like when you cross it over from one side to the other. And you can adjust it however you want. It's a matter of preference. So you can pick whatever suits your need. And then what you can do as well is you can also put a picture of yourself in. So we're going to open up a custom picture. And I'm going to look through all the pictures that I have here. So this picture I'm going to use as an example. This is an animated picture of me. Pretty cool, huh? One of my friends named Yo's Creative made this for me and she used it in a video so I'm gonna be using it for this demonstration. So what you're gonna do is you're going to make sure that you area out or select your image just by itself. So let's say for example you just want to make sure that you select your picture of yourself. Your tool may not have this but Photoshop has something called a quick selection tool so you make sure that you open your quick selection tool and you set the size of your brush to at least 69 pixels or you can go bigger to capture even more now your tool may not have this in GIMP shop or paint.net but in all versions of Photoshop it'll have this tool but I'm gonna show you another way to do it your t like I said before some photo softwares don't have this easy to use function so I'm gonna show you another way right after this so for Photoshop users you would just make sure that you just highlight the area that you want to select here so let's say I select all over now what you do is you hold down the alt key and then what will happen is that the selection brush will have a minus sign on it so if you let go of the alt key it'll have a plus sign but if you press down on the alt key and hold down on it it'll have a minus key and once you see this minus key look what happens here it gets rid of any unwanted areas you want so it's like taking out the excess and this is one thing that I did not talk about in my last tutorial because I was still new to Photoshop and since I got the new version it has a lot of new features so as you can see here what we're doing is we're taking out just the yellow parts and making sure that the areas that we want basically me is selected so we're just taking out all of the dots where the yellow is or the orange is and that's how we're just making sure that we select just me so you have to make sure that you get everything right here and then let go of the alt key if you feel you've missed an area and then just hold down the alt key if you want to keep going so so far we're getting a really good cropping and selection of myself here so we're gonna make sure that we keep getting rid of the orange and then this part here and then you can resize the brush for those hard to reach selection areas so and then you can also just highlight the areas that you want mind you this is only for Photoshop users so I'm gonna show you another way to do it if you don't have Photoshop 
So we're going to just make sure that that's selected there. Okay, so we've selected a really good portion of myself here. So what we'll do next is we're going to go to what it says, where it says Refine Edge. And here we see a preview of the already selected feature. So what this means is that what you selected is what it will preview and uh, display as. So as you can see, there's just a little bit of orange there, but we've blurred it out in a way so that it doesn't look noticeable. So what we're going to do is we're going to just adjust the feather. And as you can see, if you get the feather too high, it'll just feather out some parts. But if you put it on like the max or zero, that's what will happen. You can also adjust the contrast setting of the edging, and you can also de-smoothen it. So basically you're capturing like a rough cut, but when you smooth it out, it's more, it's more smoother. And then you can adjust the radius of the cut. So let's say you wanted a certain radius, look at that. I set the radius to 72.8 pixels and you barely see any orange. So what we'll do is we'll click OK here. And then what will happen is that we can go edit copy or you can press Control C. And then what you can do is you go back to your thumbnail and then you can press Control V on your Windows or Command something on your Mac. And then you can go Edit and then Paste. I don't have a Mac, so that's why I said Command and then whatever control is there. So you go to Paste and then it will paste in your modified cropping or your modified selection. So you can resize the selection how you want and you can position it anywhere you want here. Mind you, this has to be perfect so that you can make sure that your uh, positioning is proper. Like you can position it here, you can just reverse the angle, you can go up, you can go down, I'm Batman! Or you can just position it however you want. Let's say we want to position it whoop, like that. And then we make it bigger. Everything's big where I come from. And then you can just adjust the angle like this. And then you can go like this. Let's, let's just go with this for now. So, yeah, that looks awesome. And then what you do in a Photoshop, you go to Apply. And that's how you do it. That's how you put in a picture that's neatly cut where it doesn't show any signs of scarring or cutting. So, for non-Photoshop users, what you would normally do is you would use your lasso tool or if you have like a, a magnetic lasso or just a regular lasso you could do that too but this takes a little bit more time so you would just lasso around like this however you want you would have to detail it properly there and then you would just connect it and then so that is normally how it's done in Photoshop and I just showed you a lazier way of doing it but in the paint.net or GIMP shop or any kind of Photoshop or Pixlr you would use the lasso tool or you can just fill out the color all together and just make the thumbnail the same color as the picture that you want so let's say for example you didn't want a picture like this to have the color yellow so what you would do is you would just use the paint bucket tool and you'd fill it up to white and then what would happen is that it would change to white so or black now let's just change it back to white and I don't know why it's not working but we're not gonna bother with that now so anyways yeah what you would do here is you would create back to Photoshop users what we would do is we would create a new layer and then we would put in text so <clears throat> the text is what makes your thumbnail stand out so you use your text tool and then type in awesome job or something like that or something that makes the thumbnail stand out so you would cascade it across your face like this or however you can put in a picture of something that you want to put in and it would just make it look cool so you can use any font this is a font that I got from thefont.com all the links will be below if you want to know where to find like awesome fonts or cool resources for Photoshop or any other software so then what you do is after you finished your text you would go click the arrow and then apply and then you can add certain text effects to this in Photoshop CS6 so what you would do is you would double click down here where the layers are and then you would select your styles let's say I wanted a stroke uh, well not like a heart stroke but I wanted to stroke these letters so let's just click stroke and then look what happens black fills the text so what you can do is you can also set the size of the stroke so that it's like bolded well that's a little too much that's really too much and this is just right 
just enough stroke to make it look so bang on. And then what you do is you put in some inner shadow, some contouring, textures, making it all satin, putting some inner glow in, overlaying a gradient on it. I mean, the it's endless what you can do. You can also put patterns on it, overlay a color, put some outer glow, a drop shadow, whatever you want to do. I mean, it just makes your thumbnail just stand out from the rest. I mean, look at that. Doesn't that look amazing already? And you can resize it how you want and just apply for the changes. So you can apply whatever you change and then that's basically how you do it. So it's really neat, the things that you can do. And you can also change the gradient pattern however you want. So we're going to go and change the gradient to something else. Let's say you don't want like lines like this. You can also set it to a radial gradient, a diamond gradient. Let's just use this for example. Let's just go, there's a diamond. There's a diamond gradient. And then you can set it to however you want, which is really neat. However size you want, however position you want, it's up to you. And then what you can do is you can let's go radial. So boom, there we go. Radio gradient there, and it's up to you what you want to do. And like I said before, the photo software that you may have may not match this, and you may not have these awesome features. So don't be discouraged. You just have to find a way to work around it. You have to use the tools that have been provided for you and just make do with what you have. So after you've done everything, after you've adjusted the layers and everything, so... Okay, so when you are done everything with your thumbnail, what you will do is you will click on File and then Save As. And then what you will save it usually as is a JPEG format. So we'll go to JPEG here. And then we'll name it Thumbnail. And then you set the quality to either large or small, but the larger the file, the higher quality it is. So then you click OK. And then what you do is you go to your pictures where you saved it or wherever you saved it, and then you look at the result. Basically, we saved it in our clutter folder. So then, once you click on it, it'll give us a preview of the thumbnail, and that's what we made. So then, what you do is you go to your YouTube channel, Go to Video Manager, and then after that, you go to Edit, and then what you do, you all have this now, so you click Custom Thumbnail, and then after you go there, you go to where your thumbnail was again, and then you can select it. So we're going to click that. It'll upload the thumbnail onto YouTube's General Imaging Tool. And then, after you see that there, I know I spelled thumbnail wrong, please don't judge my spelling. That was just to be quick. And then you go save changes, it'll say changes being saved, then all changes saved. So now what you do is you click refresh and then your thumbnail should be right there. It'll take a while to refresh, but that's how you do it. So, yeah, that is generally how you create your own custom thumbnail. And, that. Ah, that's how you do it. And it's different for all photo users. So if you have certain photo software that doesn't have these tools, just find some way to work around it and you'll do fine. So thank you very much for watching. Get Field for Life and I'll respond to you another time. And if you have any other questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll respond to them soon. Thank you. Have a good day.